So question nine then from the 2022 Advanced Higher Paper 2, Proof by Induction. You're given this matrix A and you have to prove by induction that A to the power N has this form for all natural numbers. Now, induction. Now there's induction and deduction. Induction means to start with a specific instance and then form a generalisation from it. Whereas deduction means to start with a generalisation and work down to a specific conclusion. That's the sort of thing you do when you solve these questions using reasoning. You might start with a formula and come down to a specific answer. Induction, starting with a specific and generalising outwards, is what you do in everyday life when you observe something and then just assume that everything's the same. So it might not be true then. So this is, strictly speaking, mathematical induction. Because in this case, starting from a specific and working outwards is logically validated to have a correct conclusion. So, you have this matrix here, and this may or may not be true. That's just hypothetical just now. That's just a proposition. What you have to do is somehow show that proposition is true. So you start from the specific. You start from the inductive base. You start just from the case of n equals 1, the first natural number, and see if that's true. So that's the base of the induction. Then you've got to work outwards and show that the conclusion is true. In other words, this whole thing's true. So, I think I'll start, first of all, by calling this the proposition. Then when I refer to it, I can just say P, meaning this proposition. So, you have to get a base to start with. What's this specific case? Well, we test for this. So, if you let n equal 1, what have you got? Well, if n equals 1, this side would be, if I took a to the power 1, that's obviously just still a. So the result should be 3, negative 2, 0, 1. I'm going to put equals here. If I use this proposition and put 1 into it, I should have 3 to the 1, minus 3 to the 1, 0, 1. I don't know why I put that minus there. So what does that come to? So that just becomes 3, 1 take away 3 is negative 2, 0, 1. So in fact you've got the same answer. Now, the way you show that would be, well, on the, I've got the left hand side, produce this result. The right hand side produced the same result, so I can now come to a conclusion. That means P is true for N equals 1. Doing that gets the first mark. Now we make the inductive hypothesis. This is saying, well, OK, it was true to start with. Let's just assume it's true for any particular value further on, just a general case. Instead of n, you could use k then, so it's not confused with that n. And this is just an if. If it's true, if it's true somewhere further on, does it follow logically that the next step is also true? So you make what's called the inductive hypothesis. So what, now, now what we do is this, we say, well, let's just assume. So that's an if. Assume P is true for N equals some value like K. If that was the case, then A to the K would be, if it was true, 3 to the K, 1 minus 3 to the K, 0, 1. No. That's the inductive hypothesis. I'm going to name that because I need to use that in the following step. So, if it's true for that, what would happen if it was k plus 1? So I'm just considering this. So you'd put consider the case of n equals k plus 1. What would happen? Well, what should happen is, if I've got a to the k plus 1, well, that would obviously be a times a to the k. Now, just for getting as far as that, for assuming it's true for a set value of k, making the inductive hypothesis, and then continuing to consider the next case, you get a mark. Now we follow that through. Well, what's A? A is 3, negative 2, 0, 1. And what's A to the K? Now I'm going to call in my inductive hypothesis. If that is true, that's the whole point. If that is true, I could put it in here and get a value for this. So I've got 3 to the K, 1 minus 3 to the K, did it again, didn't I? 0, 1. 
Now, calling in that, so I'll put by one, calling in the inductive hypothesis. Doing that gets a mark. Well, just let, let's just see what this comes to. If this comes to this form again, if this reconstructs this with the k replaced with a k plus one, it means that step has worked. So if it was true for k, it's certainly true for k plus one. That gives you a step. Well, let's multiply this out. So it's row times column. So that'll be three times three to the k, that'll be three to the k plus one. Minus zero, I'll just put that in, minus zero. This one, that's going to be three minus three to the k plus one, but minus two. That's going to be zero and zero is just zero. That's going to be zero and one, which is just one. I'm running out of space, that was unfortunate. So what does this add up to? I've got three to the k plus one. Here you've got the three take away two is one minus three to the k plus one. There's zero, there's one. And what you've got now is the required result for k plus one, if that proposition is true. Now, the next mark isn't necessarily for getting to the final answer. You thought it would be for getting to here. It seems to be just by merely multiplying these matrices together. I would have assumed it would have been there because you've still got the big statement to make at the end. I'll put it somewhere between the two. So we've got as far as this now. Now I've run out of space. So clearing a space and summarising up here. So what were the steps again? You showed it was true for n equals 1. Right at the very start, that's definitely true. You assumed it was true somewhere further on. Just picked a random value k. That was the big if. If that's true, you don't know if it is, but if that's true, then what would happen with the next case, k plus 1? So you went through the algebra to derive that. You split a to the k plus 1 into the two parts, a times a to the k, and you use the inductive hypothesis here, your big F. You put that in, and you followed through the matrix multiplication, tied it up, and you ended up with this. Now, that's the result you should have had if it was true for the next step. So, what can you say so far then? So, what you ended up with was the required result for n equals k plus 1. So now you can go through this inductive step then. Remember, that's from the specific to the general, because you knew it was true for one. So what you've got here is this. You've got this. If P is true for, a if still, N equals K, then you have demonstrated that P is true for n equals k plus 1, whatever k happens to be. But since p, it's enough lot of writing, is true for n equals 1, so that's a definite, that's not an if, that, that's a yes, it is true if n equals 1, that was an if. That means, I'll not put that symbol in, oh no, what a mess. Then, using that inductive process, so you could say, then by induction, or maybe you should really say, then by mathematical induction. Because remember, because remember, that's different from just your general everyday induction, because that may not lead to a correct conclusion, but mathematical induction does. Then by mathematical induction, P is true for all N in the natural numbers. Now after you put that big bit down, you get the final mark. The reason being this step here. If it's true for one, then this says it's true for two. If it's true for two, it's true for three. If it's true for three, it's true for four, and so on.